Thank you very much, Tom. It's a pleasure to see you again. Thank you for inviting me to another one of your wonderful UPF programs. It's my pleasure to be here uh, this morning. Um, just as Dr. Prado began by invoking Sh uh, Shavuot as a Muslim, we've just come out of the month of Ramadan, the fasting month of Ramadan. And for all of us, uh, uh, it has been a, a unique Ramadan in all, all, on all of our lives. It is the first time ever in our lives that the, see, that the three sacred mosques uh, in Mecca, uh, in Medina, and in Jerusalem were shut down because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, and many of us felt that the COVID-19 pandemic was a sign from God. In fact, those of us who are, uh, the, the word mystics has been mentioned by, by, by Dr. Prado. We, we believe that, that creation is a book that God that is part is God's book and so we see signs in everything and many of us saw in this sign a message from God it is as if God was telling us Muslims I I really care less about your physical uh, physical movements I really feel less careless what I really care is about the connection the bond between you and me uh, and many of us felt that, uh, uh, you know, we do a, something very often in, in Ramadan called Ahtikaf, which we, we spend a portion of the month, uh, usually the last uh, 10 days or a portion of the last 10 days, in a particular retreat in the mosque, where we even go more, more deeper into ourselves. And this past month of Ramadan, we felt that the COVID pandemic actually coerced many of us into an involuntary Ahtikaf, an involuntary retreat. And all our spiritual traditions retreat us how, it, uh, how we connect with God. So the sign that many, many people who received this last month uh, or even during this whole period of, of, uh, of, of, um, of COVID-19 is a coerced retreat into ourselves. It is as if God wants us to reconnect back to him collectively. And we, we, we see this in many aspects. We see this in how... Um, uh, it has forced many of us to connect via Zoom or technological ways. So the connection is becoming less physical and more uh, non-physical, more emotional, more mental, and more spiritual primarily, because we are primarily spiritual beings. Um, we have heard about uh, how the COVID-19 pandemic has, has, and how the combination of that with technology uh, is perhaps weakening the power of nation states. And many of us have read articles uh, in the papers and journals about the, the relative weakening of, of nation states and what the COVID-19 pandemic will do to nation states and how th there's, there's perhaps a greater uh, assertion uh, of, of, of people power. I also would like to say something uh, that the, 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 uh, the biblical prophet Isaiah predicted in a very famous statement that there will come a time when nations will transform their swords into, into plowshares and, and spears into pruning forks. They will not do war anymore. Um, I would like to, I call this, this, this age, the age of Isaiah. And I actually believe and have believed for a while now that the age of Isaiah has already dawned. It has dawned in, in many parts of the world. Uh, the, the, you might, if you call it, the breakout of peace has happened. And, and to look at the journey uh, that has happened, let us look at Europe, where countries that were at war with each other for the better part of, uh, of a millennium, uh, and after the two world wars that really devast devastated a lot of them, um, those of us who are of my age and our age, Tom, uh, could not believe how countries were at war um, within our own lifetimes went from war to, um, to, to peace, to a European common market, to a European uh, common currency, the Euro, and to a European Union. And this seems to be the, the, the general direction uh, of, of, how a, of how things seem to be progressing in this age of Isaiah. Applying this analogy to the Middle East, the israeli palestinian conflict, I see the same thing happening. Uh, I do not see a two-state solution as being viable. I see that the, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is becoming more and more a story of a, of, of, of a merging towards that. Um, many people are not aware even in much of the Arab and Muslim world that the, 
the currency in the West Bank and Gaza is the Israeli shekel. The Israeli military uh, actually monitors the borders, not only of Israel, but Israel and, and, and what we consider Palestine. Uh, the, Palestine the, the Israeli economy and the Palestinian economy are very, very interdependent. Israeli companies are dependent on a lot of Palestinian labor, and the Palestinian economy is, is, is very much dependent upon, upon the Israeli uh, economy. So we see signs here. What it really needs is, is, is kind of a, uh, to, to go from the, looking from the shape, from, the, from, from each tree to looking at the shape of the forest. We need a Nelson Mandela figure, either a, a visionary Israeli prime minister or a visionary um, um, uh, Palestinian leader to, to, to start working towards a one state solution because this is what is happening. The, 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 the walls are breaking down, people are breaking down. I was approached once uh, more than 10, 15 years ago by an American, a young American uh, Jewish person who had been to Israel and Palestine. And I said there were skateboarding, skateboard teams uh, in Israel who, who uh, wanted to play with their, with, their, with their Palestinian counterparts and were actually bypassing the, uh, the, the, uh, the, 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 the barriers to participate and compete with their, with their competitors uh, and on the other side of the border. So when you look at these signs, they may have small signs, positive signs perhaps, uh, but they're signs of, of where the future will lead us to. And as people to people interaction increases, uh, I, I see this, this future uh, coming. And our work as religious or faith leaders is, is to not only to connect ourselves to, to our creator, to our God and to our one Lord, but also to be optimists, to be optimists for the future. So I'm very much, as, uh, as the Honorable Gozda in her very eloquent remarks pointed out, we, are, we, we have a very sober look upon reality. We cannot ignore reality, but we have to work for the best case scenario. I think that, that the COVID-19 situation, uh, uh, as, as you pointed out also, Tom, has created stresses upon governments. Uh, these stresses and these stress tests will, will, also, and will also contribute to not only to the weakening of the nation states, the, the, the greater uh, the, the shift in the balance of power. And even if you look at what happened in the Arab Spring, it was also a shift in, in the balance of power between the, 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 the governments and the people. Of course, the, it, it, it doesn't, it's not always a straight line thing and the curve goes up and down. But the general trend over a period of time, over a period of years and decades, uh, and 40 years may be a long time in terms of our lives, but in, in, the, in the context of history, it's a mere blip of a moment. That within the context of history, I think we, we can actually look forward to, to not only uh, the, 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 bring the dawn of the age of Isaiah, but bringing it to the rest of the world. And, uh, and this is, I think, where our work and your work of the UPF and uh, the collective work of those of us who are present uh, in, in this panel and, uh, and our audience today uh, are committed to, want to see. And that's what most of the world really, really wants to see. Uh, the time for conflict, conflicts are really, uh, will they'll always be with us. But the kind of conflict which has, which has, which has contributed to the kind of suffering that uh, we have seen in the world, continue to see in the world, uh, is something which really is an anachronism in a, in a way. Uh, it, is, it is an expression of our, of our failure. It is an expression of our incapacity. We have the capacity to be, to be better. We have the, and we, we, what, ha, what has been proven by the history of Europe and the United States is that when there is peace between peoples, when, and when there's greater interaction between peoples, when there is greater economic uh, uh, exchange between peoples, people will prosper. And at the end of the day, all, all human beings are concerned about life, liberty, and, and pursuit of happiness issues. Uh, so this is what, what we need to focus on and to, uh, and to fan the flames of and to encourage amongst all of us and all of our participants.